Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From a three-headed dog to a living whirlpool that would attack sailors, here are 10 creepy creatures from Greek mythology. Number 10. Harpies The harpies were the minions of Zeus, and as the spirits of sudden sharp gusts of wind, were sent by him to take things away from the earth. They were blamed by the Greeks when people mysteriously disappeared, and in various myths they were sent by Zeus to seek revenge against those who had disobeyed him. They had the form of birds but with human faces, and would carry people to the three goddesses known as the Irenes, who were responsible for punishing people. In one story, Zeus had given the gift of foresight to King Phineas, who used the power to uncover the plans of the god. As a punishment for his betrayal, Zeus blinded him and put him on an island with plenty of food, but every time he was about to eat, the harpies would swoop in and steal it. Eventually, Jason and the Argonauts visited the island and drove the harpies away, and they hid in a cave in Crete until they were called upon again. Number 9. Cerberus Cerberus was the personification of everything the Greeks feared in wild dogs, and was the creature responsible for guarding the gates of the underworld. It had three heads, although earlier accounts said it had as many as 100 heads, and would prevent the dead from escaping back into the real world, as well as stopping living people from making their way across the river Styx into the underworld without the permission of Hades. Often described as having a snake for a tail and other snakes protruding from its body, Cerberus was the offspring of two other monsters, Echidna and Typhon. The only time that Cerberus features in Greek mythology is in the Twelve Labors of Hercules. The final trial faced by the hero was being sent to capture the demonic hound from the underworld and bring it back to King Eurystheus. While the story is vary as to how he managed to accomplish this, the most common account said that the lord of the underworld Hades said Hercules could take Cerberus as long as he was able to tame it without the use of any weapons. He used his lion skin as a shield and was able to squeeze the dog around one of its heads until it eventually submitted to him. Number 8. The Minotaur the Minotaur is one of the most famous creatures from Greek mythology, having the body of a man but the head and tail of a bull. It was the offspring of Queen Pasiphae of Crete and a bull, and was truly monstrous. King Minos wanted to keep the Minotaur hidden, mainly because its sheer existence was a punishment handed out to him by the gods, so he ordered his most trusted craftsman Daedalus and his son Icarus to build a large labyrinth to keep it in. Every year, offerings of young men and women were sent into the maze for the Minotaur to feed on. Following a battle between Crete and Athens, which resulted in King Minos' only human son being killed, the city-state was forced to provide 14 tributes every year for the Minotaur. On the third time this happened, the son of Athens' king, Theseus, volunteered to go in order to slay the beast once and for all, and was able to do so with the help of King Minos' daughter, who had fallen in love with him and gave him a ball of thread to find his way home. The story stands as an allegory for the struggle between the civilized and the uncivilized, which was a common theme in myths from the time, and the battle between Theseus and the Minotaur is one of the most commonly depicted images from mythology throughout Greek art. And now for number 7, but first, I wanted to give a big shout out to Oscar, Stein, David, and Jimena for requesting this video today. Thank you so much for your support and remember to leave any requests you have in the comments below. Number 7. The Hydra the Lernaean Hydra lived in Lake Lerna in the region of Argolid and was the offspring of the mother and father of all monsters, Echidna and Typhon, so the sibling of Cerberus. It was a serpent-like beast with many heads, and it was said that if you cut off one of its heads, two more would grow back in its place. The head in the middle was immortal, and all of them could spit deadly acid. Its blood was deathly poisonous, and its teeth were believed to be able to raise the dead. The monster was specifically raised by the goddess Hera to kill Hercules, who was sent to kill it as his second trial. He had to cover his face to protect himself from the noxious gases that the creature produced, and learned the hard way that severing a head resulted in two more growing from the stump. Finally, he hatched a plan, where his cousin Iolaus would immediately burn each stump as soon as the head had been removed, which prevented anything from growing back. Hercules used a special golden sword to kill the immortal head, and the Hydra lay lifeless. He dipped all his arrows in the monster's blood and set off to continue his quest. Number 6. Centaurs Centaurs were, according to Greek mythology, half-human, half-horse creatures that were the children of Ixion, the king of Lapis, and Nephele, a cloud that had been made in the form of the goddess Hera. 
They had the body of a horse and the torso, head, and arms of a man. In the legends, most centaurs were wild and lustful beings, solely concerned with what was best for themselves. There was one exception though, and that was the one called Chiron, who was wise and civilized. He was a teacher and brewed potions, and famously was the tutor of Achilles. He is mainly known from the story of Hercules though, who accidentally shot Chiron with an arrow that had been covered in the poisonous blood of the Hydra. Although centaurs were immortal, this left him in extreme pain. Later on, when Hercules asked for Prometheus to be freed, Zeus demanded a sacrifice, and Chiron volunteered himself to grant Prometheus his freedom and to release himself from the never ending anguish. Number 5. The Cyclops While most creatures from Greek mythology were invented to represent a specific meaning or purpose, recent discoveries have suggested that the ancient Greeks truly believed Cyclops to be real. They were one-eyed giants who feature in a number of myths that were probably inspired by the remains of an ancient species of elephant that used to live in Greece and Crete. The skull bones of these creatures have a large central opening where the trunk would have attached, and ancient Greeks mistakenly thought that these were recesses for an eye socket. According to Homer, they were cannibals and lived in Sicily, what was then a far distant land. The most famous mention of a cyclops comes from the Odyssey, when Odysseus had to blind one of them to escape death, but other stories attributed far greater significance to them. In Hesiod, they were the three sons of Uranus and Gaia called Arges, Brontes, and Steropes, and were responsible for making the thunderbolts that were used by Zeus. They were also said to have built the walls of several ancient cities, such as Tyrans, which has resulted in the term Cyclopean being used to describe walls that have been built with stones that aren't square. The more you know. Number 4. Charybdis and Scylla In the Odyssey, Odysseus had to sail his ship through the narrow strait of Messina, but it wasn't just treacherous rocks he had to watch out for because each side was guarded by dangerous monsters. Charybdis and Scylla Charybdis is thought to have been the personification of a whirlpool which occurs in the strait and was said to have lived under a rock, emerging to swallow huge amounts of water and then belching it out again to form a maelstrom that could drag a ship underwater. Because of this threat, Odysseus navigated to the other side of the strait and right into the clutches of an arguably even greater danger. Scylla was a female monster that had 12 feet and 6 heads on long, windy necks. Each mouth had rows and rows of shark-like teeth, and her loins were rimmed with the heads of rabid dogs. She had such long necks that she remained in her cave and would eat anything within her reach, including six of Odysseus's crewmates. It's thought that Scylla was created to represent a series of rock or a reef, and both of these monsters portray dangers that early Greek sailors would have faced in the unknowns of the ocean. To this day, you may hear the phrase to be between Scylla and Charybdis, which you can probably guess means to be caught between a rock and a hard place, which means two undesirable options. Never mind, you get it. Number 3. Chimera The Chimera was another offspring of Echidna and Typhon, and sibling to Cerberus and the Hydra. It had the body and head of a lion, a head of a goat that was attached to its back, and a tail that was the head of a snake. The word now means an imaginative creation or a grotesque beast, and to the ancient Greeks, it represented just that. It was said to live in Lycia in Asia Minor, where it tormented residents and laid waste to the region with its fire breath. Eventually, it was felled at the request of King Eobates of Lycia, who enlisted the help of Bellerophon. He flew on Pegasus's back and fired arrows at the Chimera from above until it could take no more. Number 2. Typhon Now it's time to meet the parents. Typhon was the father of all monsters along with his wife Echidna. As you can imagine, for someone who spawned the likes of Cerberus, the Hydra, and the Chimera, he was a mighty beast in his own right. He was a giant serpent with 100 dragon heads. He battled with Zeus and his loss is what led to Zeus finally becoming the king of all the gods. Immensely powerful and with so many heads that emitted fire and ghastly sounds, the battle between the two was cataclysmic, but in the end, he was punished by the victor. Typhon was banished to the underworld in some accounts, or to beneath a volcano like Mount Etna in others. He became synonymous with volcanic activity and was also responsible for creating powerful winds. He's also one of the very few creatures from Greek mythology that has been linked with Egyptian legends, often being very closely aligned with Seth, the god of storms, disorder, and warfare. Number 1. Medusa Undoubtedly, the best-known creature from Greek mythology is Medusa, the winged woman with venomous snakes instead of hair. She was one of three Gorgons, but unlike her siblings that also included Echidna, Medusa wasn't born a monster. 
Originally, she was a stunning and beautiful mortal, but because of a love affair she had with Poseidon, she was cursed by Athena and turned into the most hideous monster of all. There are variations of this story and Medusa's actual willingness to be with Poseidon, but we'll leave it at that. Looking into her eyes would turn anyone into stone, but with the help of Athena and Hermes, Perseus was able to defeat her. She was decapitated and from her neck sprang her two children from Poseidon, Chryseor and Pegasus. Her head was taken back home with Perseus, but it was said that on his way a drop of her blood fell to the ground and sprouted snakes, which is why to this day the country of Libya is full of them. Thanks for watching! Which creature was your favorite? Any other stories you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe before you go and I'll see you next time! Bye!